I should have been here 20 minutes ago. Reba, how do you expect me to sketch you for my art class when you keep walking around? Now hold still. Ooh, sultry. Yeah. <laughs> Very romance novel. I'm gonna draw Fabio standing behind you. Barbara Jean, that can wait. Did Van say how serious his injury is? He just said it was his back and the team was sending him home. Oh, perfect. Say home again. <laughs> Home. Barbara Jean. Go home! Okay, thank you guys. I don't have very much time. Van's on his way in. But listen, I have to warn you. Do not make fun of his injury. Why? What is it? He broke his butt. <laughs> well, he actually fractured his tailbone, but let's face it, he broke his butt. <laughs> Guys, that is not funny. I know, no, no, no. no, no Come on, Reem, it's just that we're relieved that yeah. it's not serious. No, yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so it was your, um, your back, huh? Yeah, the back. The back-ish. <laughs> hey, buddy, why don't you come on and take a seat? No, thanks, I'll just stand. Oh, honey, don't be silly. You have to get off your feet. <laughs> Seriously, Van? Pull up a donut? <laughs> All right, you know what? This is not funny. No, no, no. no, 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 no you're right, you're right. Sorry about that. Yes. <laughs> it has a leak. <laughs> Van, don't be embarrassed about your butt ring. <laughs> When I was on the high school volleyball team, I took a ball right to the eye, just whammo, you know? And for the rest of the season, I had to wear these huge bug-eyed goggles that everyone made fun of. <laughs> Would have been nice if someone had mentioned. I only had to wear them during games. <laughs> Cheyenne, I want to go back to Denver. Okay, no, 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 wait. Van's hurt, and in this very tough time, he deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Mrs. H. Now, if you all had enough fun, I'm gonna go upstairs and get some rest. Hey, buddy. Okay. Hey, man. Feel stops with gentle hands and the heart of a fighter. I'm a survivor. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. <laughs> Is. I don't know, but he better clear me to play soon. The team needs me. Well, don't you have that second stringy guy? <laughs> Steve Worley? <laughs> Worley don't do what Van do. <laughs> hey. Sorry about the wait, folks. No problem. So, what's up, Doc? <laughs> I bet you hear that a lot. Now, since the last time you were here. <laughs> hey. You know, I don't know if it's from the massive dose of x-rays you shot through me, but my tailbone feels terrific. Yeah, I'm sorry about all that, Dan. The tailbone looks fine, oh. but there's something else I needed to get a good look at. Whoa, 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 whoa! I don't know if we need to be showing my mother-in-law my onion. <laughs> it's not your onion, it's this. Wow, you can't show that! <laughs> That's your spine. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever heard of spinal stenosis? It's a narrowing of the spinal canal. Has anyone ever mentioned this to you before? My spine is getting narrow? Is that why my pants have been feeling looser? <laughs> no. 
Stenosis is a fairly common condition. Most people that have it never even know it. So you're saying it's not a problem? Usually there's no problem leading a normal active life. There is a problem, however, if you're in a contact sport, like football. What do you mean? Well, no team will take the risk. A player could become paralyzed because of this. They'd be liable. If they had known about this, there's no way they would have put you on the team. Well, then don't tell them. <laughs> I have to tell them. They sent you here, Van. Van? Who's Van? <laughs> My name's Worley. Steve Worley. Now, ladies, if you'll come with me, Mrs. Worley, Mother Worley. <laughs> How was the drive? Oh, I went by the park and saw these little tiny kids playing football. And I thought, children, stop. Don't fall in love with this sport. Your dreams are just gonna get ripped to shreds like a bunny and a wood chipper. Actually, uh, you didn't really think it. You, you kind of yelled it. Good. The truth should be yelled. Maybe that's what I'll do with my life now. I'll just wander around and yell the truth. <laughs> But maybe not at little kids, because they start to cry. Yeah. <laughs> Man, look on the bright side. The doctor said this wouldn't affect your daily life. You can still do all the things that a regular person can do. Mrs. H, I don't want to be a regular person. <laughs> Actually, Dad, I hate to bring this up, but I was hoping I could ask you some financial questions. we got to figure out what we're going to do money-wise now that, now that Van's not going to be working. Yeah. Well, I can help. When your dad was fiddling around with that silly golf career, I got quite good at stretching a buck. First of all, winning the Presto Dry Cleaner Invitational wasn't fiddling around. Okay, and Van is still under contract. He gets paid for the rest of the year. Really? Yeah, yeah, so stop worrying, you two. Yeah, that's right. Stop worrying. Everything is just gonna be Hunky dory Come on, Barbara Jean. Let's see if we can find somebody else for you to cheer up. Oh, okay, look, Van, I'm gonna go to the pharmacy to pick up your prescriptions for those anti-inflammatories and those painkillers. Oh, and that topical cream for your bottom. <laughs> So how's it going there, buddy? Oh, never felt better. <laughs> Just sitting here trying to decide what kind of cigarettes I'm gonna start smoking. Look, man, this is a tough situation and I'm not gonna pretend like it isn't. But it's a mother-in-law's job to point out the good in every situation. Oh, I thought it was a mother-in-law's job to make butt jokes about her son-in-law. <laughs> we wear many hats. <laughs> Okay, here's the good. You've had a great career, you've got a wonderful family, and now you get to find something new and exciting to do with the rest of your life. But football was all I had. That's what you think today. You'll find something. God never closes a door without opening another one. Lucky strikes. <laughs> What? Yeah, that's the kind of cigarettes I'm going to start smoking. Like the, <laughs> the irony will just be magnificent. <laughs> no. Look, you'll get your buyout from the team, and that'll give you some extra time to figure things out. All right, I wasn't going to say this in front of Cheyenne, but there's not going to be a buyout. You heard the doctor. This was a pre-existing condition. So? So I talked to my agent, and that means the team doesn't owe me anything. Oh, boy. Yeah. So much for being hunky-dory. <laughs> no football, no money, no life. I'll have to look forward to now is a lifetime of topical creams. <laughs> for my bottom! You know who I blame for Van not getting paid? 
The lawyers. Yeah, they run everything. And they're in bed with the doctors. Now, the people who should be running things, the dentists, <laughs> nobody comes to. But aren't the dentist in bed with the dental hygienist? <laughs> So no settlement, no job, great. My life is, is turning out perfectly. Pretty soon, I will have achieved my dream of being the prettiest girl in the homeless shelter. Come on, sweetie, you put some money away, and we'll do whatever we can to help out until Van figures out what he's gonna do next. Well, that's just it. What is Van gonna do now? Ta-da! <laughs> He's become a pimp! <laughs> Y'all wondering what I'm doing in a rich guy's coat? Well, I'll tell you, I'm a rich guy. What are you talking about? Talking about being rich, baby. <laughs> the team gave me the settlement! Whoa, 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 hold on a second. I thought they were off the hook because it was a pre-existing condition. That's what their lawyer was saying, but my agent said they didn't find it when I had my first physical. And then it got kind of dull and I dozed off. <laughs> All I know is when I woke up, I was rich! <laughs> I gotta sit down. Oh, no, no, no. So I don't have to pretend that it's all gonna work out because it actually is gonna work out? Yes. And Mrs. H, your support through this was huge. You were my rock. Come here. <laughs> I also like to publicly apologize to God for calling him fat, mean, and stupid. <laughs> Yes. Van. Wrong. A hundred grand. Van? Don't joke. I'm not. I got a hundred thousand bucks minus the coat. <gasps> Whoa. A hundred grand? Well, minus the coat. Oh. Oh, Van, don't take it off. I have to draw you. Yeah. Mrs. H, you were right. God does not close one door without opening another. And sometimes behind that other door is a guy holding a check with a one and four zeros on it. <laughs> One and four zeros is 10,000. <laughs> uh, five. One and five zeros. For Rich! I've gone from like homeless to rich in like two seconds. Rich is way better. <laughs> I know. I can finally get that boat I've always wanted. Yeah. You never wanted a boat. I know. I can finally want a boat. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should travel. See the world. <laughs> Knock it off. He didn't pick that money off a tree out front. It's to replace his salary. This money should be invested. I'm with Mrs. H. Investing is the way to go. I just need to decide if I want to invest in baseball cards or antique swords. Antique, 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 antique swords. Antique swords. Antique swords. Antique swords. <laughs> invest in something safe. Baseball, baseball cards. cards. Baseball baseball cards. cards. Yeah. <laughs> I came into some money once. And as I was all set to blow it on a pair of diamond earrings, something I'd wanted since I was a little girl. But I knew it was foolish. So instead, I used it to secure my future. You are so wise. I'm going to draw you as an owl. <laughs> With Fabio behind you. Mom, what'd you do with the money? Put your dad through dental school. Nobody say nothing! <laughs> hey, Mom, listen. <laughs> I love that song. Yeah. What's that? Well, it's a guitar. I realize it's a guitar, Kira. They did teach us a little something in Moron School. <laughs> I meant, where'd you get it? Van bought it for me. Why would he do that? Well, yesterday I would have said it's because he's an idiot, but today it's because he's the best brother-in-law on the planet. <laughs> Mom, you gotta come upstairs and see the Xbox Van got. Okay, what's going on? You can't use it up there. You don't even have a TV in your room. I do now. I put it right next to my new foosball table. <laughs> don't break it. It's going back. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Why would he need an Xbox? You can't write a beautiful song about your mother on an Xbox, like... I love my mommy! Yeah! <laughs> Work on it. Where's Van? He's out. Yeah, out of his mind. 
Do you know he's out buying stuff like they're going to quit making it? Uh-huh. Hey, Mom, which one of these cars goes better with my eyes? <laughs> looking at cars. Yeah. Yesterday you were practically in tears worrying about not having any money. Well, yesterday we didn't have any money, but now we do, so I'm not worried. I'm giddy. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't want to be giddy. Giddy lives next door to Reckless, who shares an apartment with Stupid. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. Oh, sweet Van. I complimented him on the coat, and he just took it off and gave it to me. Like a movie. <laughs> I hope nobody compliments him on his pants. <laughs> He's gonna get a new coat on the way home from buying Brock Golf Clubs. Oh. That kid is generous to a fault. <laughs> yes, to a fault. He needs to use that money to live on until he can find a new career. Mom, there is plenty of money left. Cheyenne, this is just day one. All this stuff has to go back. <laughs> Do not touch the coat. No, 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 no. Oh, hey, Mrs. H. You don't need to be doing that. If the carpet's dirty, I'll just buy you a new house. Well, that's awfully crazy of you, Van, but no thanks. We need to talk. Okay, but my team's on TV in a few minutes. Hey, listen to this. Somebody emailed them and said they should all wear a little sticker with my number on on the back of their helmets. <laughs> okay, it was me. <laughs> hey, where is everybody? Well, let's see. Cheyenne is looking at cars. Kira's up playing her guitar. Yeah. Brock's golfing. Jake's playing his new video games. Mm -hmm. And Barbara Jean's walking up down the street in her new coat yelling, Check it yeah. out! Good, because I didn't want them to get jealous that I got you your own pizza. You got me a pizza. Mm-hmm. With everything on it. Man, I can't accept your pizza. Are you mad because I didn't get you something nicer? We need to talk. Well, I'm not talking. Unless you <laughs> eat your pizza, who will blink first? <gasps> yeah, I got you. You should have seen your face. Mm. <laughs> You're hilarious when you pout. <laughs> Van, these are completely, oh, gorgeous, oh. Well, you said you always wanted diamond earrings. Now you got them. I don't know what to say. Just say what's in your heart, Mrs. H. Okay. <laughs> Have you lost what little sense God gave you? I think I figured out why you don't get a lot of gifts. <laughs> Man, you can't do this. You can't rip through this money like a bag of sour cream potato chips. I'm not ripping through it. 50,000 goes pretty quick. It's a hundred grand. You have to pay a little thing called taxes. You have to pay taxes on that money. And it'll be about half. Half? Yeah. <laughs> I thought Bush was looking out for us rich guys. And what's left after taxes will have to last until you figure out what you're going to do with the rest of your life. It's not to blow on a bunch of dumb gifts and one gorgeous pair of earrings. <laughs> what's going on? I don't know. I guess I just like the way it felt when I gave people stuff. The way they looked at me with that look. What look? That look everybody used to give me when I had a good game or got written about in the paper. You know, like I was a hero. That look. And now that I'm not playing football anymore, I'm not going to get that look. I go back to being dumb old Van. I think I know a way you can get that hero look without being Diamond Jim Brady. Me too. Rescue someone from a burning building. <laughs> but there are never any fires in this neighborhood. 
You want people to look at you like a hero? Then be a hero. Do something heroic with your life. Deal with this tough time that you're going through. Find your way. I don't know what's gonna happen to me, Mrs. H. It's okay. Heroes never do. Now here, why don't you take these back? <laughs> Later. Because right now I'm gonna run up and down the street with Bart and Jean. <laughs> Now, previously on Reba... I don't have very much time. Van's on his way in. But listen, I have to warn you. Do not make fun of his injury. Why? What is it? He broke his butt. <laughs> have you ever heard of spinal stenosis? It's a narrowing of the spinal canal. My spine is getting narrow? Is that why my pants have been feeling looser? <laughs> no football, no money, no life. All I got to look forward to now is a lifetime of topical creams. <laughs> For my bottom! Surprise! <laughs> Barbara Jean, what the heck? I'm lonely. <laughs> scared the heck out of me. I could have hit you. See? Ow. I came to see Van. What with his spine being narrow and his football career being over, talking to him makes me feel better about my life. I'm not really worried about him. I've never seen him so down. Steve Wright! There is no better place to be on a beautiful day than a smoke-filled bowling alley. Are you okay? I mean, if you're still down about losing your football career, we can talk about it. No, no, I'm fine. I've been through all the stages of grief. Denial, anger, unusually dry skin. <laughs> and now I feel like a moist new man. <laughs> okay, great. So I guess the next step is for you to find a new job. A job? Yep. No way. I finally have all the time to do those things I missed when I was off playing football. Not just bowling. Important things. Going to the movies, seeing old friends, a little light gardening. I'm telling you, life is a cabaret now that I've got a narrow spine. What do I do? What? He's so happy. Wish I had a narrow spine. stops with gentle hands and the heart of a fighter. I'm a survivor. I'm signing up for another evening class, so I'm not going to be home until after dinner. Another class? What are you trying to do? Graduate by morning? <laughs> Honey, are you sure you can deal with all that plus Elizabeth too? You're right, I can't. So can you pick up Elizabeth from preschool from now on? No, I have a job and you have a husband. He can't be doing anything that's more important than watching his daughter. Okay, I'm off to the lake. <laughs> it's a huge body of water with a house fish. Guess what I'm doing? Picking Elizabeth up at three. Nope, the license says fishing. <laughs> 
Let me get this straight. You want me to skip class to pick up Elizabeth so you can go fishing? Yes, thank you, honey. You're the best wife ever. You're picking up Elizabeth. She got him! <laughs> Man, she's working really hard. And working hard builds character. You ought to try it sometime. You know what else builds character? Fresh trout! <laughs> That's a good idea. Why don't you get Elizabeth and take her down to the grocery store and pick some up for dinner? All right, fine. I'll buy fish. But I'm bringing a cooler full of beer to do it. Catch me a carton of eggs while you're at it. <laughs> hey, Reba. Big news. I figured out why I was so lonely. I was so lonely because I was alone. <laughs> Oh, Barbara Jean, you can't be lonely as long as there's voices in your head. No, Reba, I was seized with loneliness because I miss Brock. Yeah, and so I was thinking about asking him to move back in with me. Wow, really? Well, actually, I was thinking about asking you if you'd ask him for me. Me? And why would I do that? Because you're my bestest friend in the whole wide world. Reba, please. Barbara Jean, this is between you and Brock. I and mean, if you're sure you want him back, ask him yourself. If you're just lonely, get a dog. Van, I'm home. Elizabeth is asleep. Oh, sorry. I'll try to keep it down. <laughs> um, hello. Hello. Who are you? Who are you? I live here. I'm Elizabeth's nanny. Elizabeth. Oh. Van! Shh. Sorry, sorry. Van! Oh, hey, Mrs. H. Oh, I see you've met Penny, our nanny. You hired a nanny? Huh? I can't believe Cheyenne approved of this. Oh, that's the beauty of her being so busy. She doesn't even know. <laughs> oh. Penny is great. Elizabeth's toys have never been cleaner. And she's teaching Jake Spanish. It's for that, Mama. Me gusta a Penny. <laughs> Buena cento, Jake. Gracias, Penny. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Penny, but uh, Van can take over from here. No, 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 I can't. Penny is making chicken mole. That is the most complicated sauce in the Spanish language. <laughs> you want me to leave? Oh, well, yes. Uh, take the rest of the day off with pay. I love to. But I don't work for you. Hey, I can't stay. I've got to get my lab stuff. But I will be back around. Hello. You must be the mother. I will raise your daughter right. Van hired a nanny. What? Van? Thank me later, honey. We'll have fun at school. You know what? I've got class right now, but remind me to yell at you later. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not going to even remind her. <laughs> Van. Oh, Mrs. H, what is the big deal? I want the best for my daughter. This way, Elizabeth gets to have quality time with me and quantity time with the professional. The big deal is, I thought you were watching Elizabeth. That's your job. I outsourced it. Oh. Come on, Mrs. H. Lots of people hire help. Why should I wait till I'm old to take some time off? Van! Underly! Bumbles! I gotta go. Jake is El Mato. I'm learning Spanish, too. <laughs> there is a Mr. Brock at the back door. Also, there is a sullen young lady named Kira who wants her allowance with no questions about school, her friends, or her life. I will have a little chat with her while I make the polenta. Who's that woman? And why did she pat me down with an antiseptic wipe? Well, we've all wanted to. It was actually quite refreshing. To what do I owe this inconvenience? Well, I'm having dinner at Barbara Jean's tonight, like we do every week, and I'm thinking about doing something a little risky. Spending more than four dollars on a bottle of wine? No, asking her if I can move back in. Oh, really? Yeah, see, it's a little risky because I don't want to put any pressure on her. I mean, she's the one who kicked me out, and 
She wants me to move back. She'll ask me to move back. But she hasn't asked me to move back, and it's killing me. And so I was wondering if you could, you know, kind of ask her if she's thinking about it. So you want me to ask her to go to the prom with you? <laughs> Metaphorically, yes. Look, Brock, you're not the only one a little nervous about all this. Oh, my gosh. Are you saying that Barbara Jean has told you that she's thinking about asking me to move back in? Yes, but don't you dare tell her I told you. When she does ask you, you act surprised. Not that fake, ridiculous surprise that you have. I mean, really surprised. <laughs> oh, Reba, I just have... Oh, Brock. Hi. Barbara Jean, wow! <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> What's up, Barbara Jean? Well, I have some news, and since you're both here, I may as well tell you at the same time. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but it's okay. Please, continue. <laughs> the step that I'm about to take is a big commitment emotionally, and I know that there is always the possibility of getting hurt. But I have decided that it is worth the risk. So, <laughs> Barbara Jean... Is there something you wanted to tell me? Yes. <laughs> I got a dog! <laughs> well, that is a surprise. <laughs>
Shane, you're stretching yourself way too thin. Oh, it's more than stretching, Mom. It's cardio, it's diet, it's a lot of work. I meant with your classes. Honey, you gotta slow down. No, I don't have a choice. I have to graduate early. I'm the breadwinner now. What? Yeah. My husband's not working. I have to pay the bills and, and put a roof over our heads and buy clothes and food and everything. Oh, honey, no, you don't. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Cheyenne, pushing yourself beyond your limits isn't going to help anything. Well, I don't know what else to do. Talk to your husband. Tell him how you feel. What kind of wife do you think I am? <laughs> My husband is going through a very difficult time, and the last thing he needs is me on his back. He has a weak spine. He has a narrow spine. Your father has the weak spine. How am I supposed to tell my husband that, that I think his life has peaked, that, that his best days are behind him? Well, you don't have to say it like that. Van had a great time playing football, but it wasn't going to last forever. He'll find something. Maybe nothing as glamorous as football, but life isn't about glamour. It's about finding the little moments of joy that you can share with your family. I know. I just... I feel like we've had such bad luck. No, no, no. You've had good luck. Bad luck would have been if the doctors hadn't have found it and Van could have really gotten hurt. I never thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Top that penny. <laughs> Here you go. Mm -hmm. So, more salt, huh? Yeah. Hey, Barbara Jean. Hey. Uh, gee, honey, do you really think it's sanitary to have a dog up on the counter? Uh, well, of course it is. Here, taste this. Needs a little salt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brock, no! Hey, but oh, I'm... No, not you, Brock. Brock. <laughs> well, that is just so funny. She only does that to you. And yet, with one stomp of my foot, I could put an end to it. <laughs> Barbara Jean, can't we put the dog out in the yard or something? No! Gosh. It's dark out there. Now, you are both important to me, and I want you to get to know each other better. Now, you go sit down, and I'll get the appetizers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> Say something nice to her. You know, my favorite part of Old Yeller was the ending. <gasps> Now what? I can't talk to a dog. What is wrong with you? Why are you being so hostile to her? Because I was here first. What? Why'd you get a dog, Barbara Jean? Because you need a license to get a monkey. <laughs> you never wanted a dog before. Well, I was never lonely before. Yeah, but you don't have to be lonely. We've been making really good progress. You know, I thought that you were gonna invite me to move back. Instead, you, you, you replaced me with... Brock! Well, I got scared, okay? You know, suddenly, suddenly everything just became very real to me, and, Brock, I kept thinking, what if you do come back? And I get all happy like I was before, and then everything just falls apart again. I really couldn't take that. Honey, I love you. I'm not gonna let things fall apart, I swear. You promise? I promise. Okay. Okay? Okay. I love you, Barbara Jean. No. I love you too, Brock. Well, not you, Brock. Brock, Brock. Brock. You know what? I just realized this could get confusing. From now on, I'm gonna call you... Reba. I love it. I love it. Say, can we put Reba outside? Oh, I think so. <laughs> there you go, 
Reba. <laughs> Reba, no! No! <laughs> oh. We need to talk. Now. This has been coming for a long time. Bring it on, Cheyenne. Not you, him. Stop yelling. You know who has the right to yell? 15,000 refugees, that's who. Okay, who wants to go upstairs and play a nice game of Monopoly? Monopoly is the game of capitalist pigs. Viva la revolution! That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, how cheesy it is. What's going on? It's about the nanny. Oh, let me guess. You want to get rid of her? No. No, actually, I want to keep her. Really? Yeah, yeah. We're going to need someone to help us take care of Elizabeth while you're looking for a job. A job? What is it with everybody wanting me to get a job? I'm not ready. Well, when are you going to be ready, Van? I don't know, Cheyenne. Forgive me if I'm not rushing out looking for a job that I'm going to hate to replace the one I love. Well, you can't fish for the rest of your life. I can if someone teaches me. <laughs> that you were adjusting. Well, I'm not. I'm doing all this stuff to distract myself so I don't have to sit here and, and think about how screwed up everything is. Football was all I knew, Cheyenne. I just... I, I think I need to be lost for a little while. Cheyenne, is everything okay? Yeah, no, everything's great. Dinner is ready. You know what? I'm gonna get lost after the chicken mole. <laughs> is that dinner for me, too? Sure, you too. Will you show me where you keep the cheese grater? I'd love to. But I don't work for you. <laughs> Personal. Too personal. Mm -hmm. Barbara Jean, you're my stepmother-in-law, partial grandmother to my child, the woman that I may one day have to put in a home. You put me in a home? In a heartbeat. That is so sweet. But no. Oh, great. <clears throat> All right, now scoot. I don't know how much longer I can hold this in. Fine, no home for you. You can forget about pudding and you can diaper yourself. Okay, Reba. I have got huge news. Huge. Barbara Jean, I've had a long, bad day. And the last thing I want to do is sit here and pretend that I'm interested in anything you have to say. That's also true on a good day. <laughs> I have a crush on my marriage counselor. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> hey! My roots are planted in the past. Though my life is changing fast. Who I am is who I want to be A single mom who works too hard Who loves her kids and never stops With gentle hands and the heart of a fighter I'm a survivor Barbara Jean has the hots for her marriage counselor. Shut up. No, you shut up. No, you shut up. I'm serious, they'll hear us. 
Oh, Reba, Dr. Morgan is so dreamy. And I know he's paid to listen, but the way he hangs on my every word, it's like he's doing it for free. <laughs> okay, clearly, you've got to stop seeing the man. Oh, I can't. I already made Brock fire our last two counselors. If, if I do it again, he's going to ask why. What am I going to say? Oh, oh, I can't look at him without purring. <laughs> Talk it over with Dr. Morgan. I'm sure he's dealt with this kind of situation before. Okay. All right, I will. Will you go with me? No. Reba, please. I can't do this alone. I'm weak. People only think I'm strong because I'm tall. I understand. Just like they all think you're crazy, because you are. Hey, Mom, what you doing? Yeah, is anything interesting going on? Because there's nothing going on here. No. <laughs> you can cut the act. I know you guys were listening. Oh, good. It's so hard for me to convince people I don't know anything. <laughs> Mom, you have to go down there with Barbara Jean. Why? All she has to do is go talk to the man. And even she can do that. No, 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 no. Talking is exactly how you get yourself into trouble. Eventually, you run out of words and the clothes start flying. Mm -hmm. If we had better vocabularies, you wouldn't be a grandma. <laughs> Nothing is going to happen between them. Well, maybe not, but what could happen is that Barbara Jean says it the wrong way and it somehow gets back to Dad. Their marriage is in a fragile place right now. Everything could be lost if Barbara Jean starts dating. <laughs> Mom, you've got to go down there with her. Why? When did Barbara Jean become my responsibility? When your husband married her. <laughs> Look, Mom, Barbara Jean needs your help, and if you don't go down there with her, we will. Yeah, we will. And I can't promise you if things get heated up, I won't open up a can of whoop-ass on Dr. Delicious. <laughs> Don't make them open up the can, Mom. Not a good enough reason. Fine. But all I know is... The better she gets along with Dad, the less she's over here. No, that's a good enough reason. <laughs> I'm weird. Barbara Jean, the man deals with crackpots and head cases all day. He could seem normal anywhere, he'd be here. Oh, thanks, Reba. You always know what to say. Speaking of, what are you gonna say to him? I was thinking I'd start with, run for the hills. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just long for the ride. Oh, but you have to. Just seeing him gets me all tongue-tied and giggly. Oh, for the love of grits and gravy, Barbara Jean, you're a grown woman. Quit acting like a little silly yum. I know. He's like orange chicken for the eyes. Well, hey, Barbara Jean. <laughs> this is an unexpected pleasure. <laughs> oh, for me, too. <laughs> Every time's a pleasure. <laughs> well, you know, I don't mean a pleasure. Pleasure. You know, like a pleasure. <laughs> I just mean pleasure. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Why can't I stop saying that word? <laughs> Hi, I'm Reba Hart. I just came along to keep her from babbling. <laughs> I've let her down. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Jack Morgan. It's nice to meet you. You too. Okay, Reba, you can go now. What? Two seconds ago, you wanted me to do all the talking. Well, yes. Yeah, so that was before you started acting like I just introduced you to Davy Jones of the Monkees. Uh, I'm sorry. Is there something going on I should know about? <laughs> Ask her. <laughs> oh, well, it's, um, it's, it's funny, really, you know. People... <laughs> Um, I just, uh, I, uh, I think, I think you're, oh, God, you smell good. 
What she's trying to say is she has a problem because she is attracted to you. Oh, you do smell good. <laughs> Okay, no, I see. Barbara Jean, I know you love Brock. <laughs> oh, I do. I really, I really do. I'm evil, that's all. No, you're going through something called transference. It's when somebody in your situation becomes attracted to their therapist. Even some of the nerdy doctors get it. <laughs> so, so I'm not bad? You don't want to punish me? Trust me, no, no, you're a good person. But since you're still flirting with me, I should probably refer you and Brock to somebody else. So um, I'll tell Brock that it's because I've taken on too much. Oh, doctor, you are a wonderful, wonderful man. Oh, God. <laughs> She took my gum. You know, you handled that pretty well. Oh, thanks. It, it does happen to therapists quite a bit. I've had patients fall for me before. I bet. I mean, <laughs> yeah, people are weak. I, I guess I better go. Um, Dr. Reba. Morgan, go ahead. No, please, you. Go first. Well, I was just wondering, since uh, you're not seeing Brock and Barbara Jean anymore, maybe I could take their spot. Oh, you're married. No, no, I'm not even seeing anyone. Yet you feel the need for marriage counseling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Silly me. No, I, I just thought it would be neat for you and I to kind of sit down and chat either here or in a dimly lit Italian restaurant, either way. Oh, are you asking me out? Or do you actually want to see me as a patient? What do you suggest? You're the doctor. Well, if you're asking to see me as a patient, you pay. If you're asking me out, I pay. Oh, good. Let's go with the second. <laughs> oh, Cheyenne, there you are. Hey, I need you to do me some favors. I need you to switch the laundry. Watch Jake tonight and pick up some milk at the store. Why? Because I sold the cow for some magic beans. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean about watching Jake. What are you doing tonight? I have a date. A date? You don't date. <laughs> yes, I do. Theoretically. Who is it? Is it the butcher with the lazy eye? <laughs> no. The delivery guy with the hump? His name is Dr. Morgan, and for your information, he's prettier than me. Dr. Morgan. Dr. Morgan, where do I know that name from? It'll come to you. Hey, Mrs. H, what's new? Dr. Morgan, she is dating Dad and Barbara Jean's marriage counselor. Is that true? <laughs> yes. But in my defense, he's very hot. Well, does she know? Does who know? Don't play dumb with me. <laughs> I practically invented that. You know who. Barbara Jean, did you ask her if it's okay? Why should I? Barbara Jean didn't get my permission when she dated Brock. So you're saying you're no better than Barbara Jean? Ooh. <gasps> Burn. <laughs> Try not asking her now. I'll do it. Wish I could trade you kids for some magic beans. Hey, Brock. Hey, Reba. What you doing, washing your wig? <laughs> Seriously, you and the dog have the same hair. <laughs> oh, hey, Reba. Hey. Oh. Don't they just look adorable? My little precious and my big precious. It was then he realized 
that masculine feeling would never return. <laughs> so, Reba, what brings you by? Well, I just wanted to come by and tell you something. I have a date. Oh, oh way to go, hot stuff. Is it the butcher with the lazy eye? <laughs> No. Oh, Reba, it's not Harry the Hump. It's Dr. Morgan. Barbara Jean, hmm? are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I just lost the feeling in my head there for a second. You know how it does. So you okay with this? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. I'm fine. Yeah. I mean, why would I care that you're gonna go out with my man? I mean, our man, you know, our counselor. <laughs> there is just one tiny little problem, though. Yeah, what's that? He's gay. What? Oh, Brock, he's not gay. Of course not. Why would you say something stupid like that? Oh, please, look at the guy. Stylish haircut, killer smile, tan. <laughs> Seems like a guy who's a little too into his appearance. <laughs> Oh, great. Now my hands are all wrinkled from this stupid bath. So, anyhow, I just wanted to come by and tell you about my date. Glad you don't have a problem with it. <laughs> Brock, honey, I, I got a little headache. Could you give me some aspirin? Oh, yeah, sure, honey. Okay. I've got to get some hand cream anyway. Right. <laughs> well, so you finally got me, huh? You paid me back. I took your man, so now you're going to take mine? I didn't take your man. You already have one. That's all you get. They're not collectibles. <laughs> you were never my friend, were you? You know, you, you just wanted to keep me close until the day you could deliver your traitorous blow. <laughs> well, congratulations, Peaches. You killed something today. My respect for you. Oh, Barbara. Oh, no, no, no. You don't get to call me by my first name. No, that is reserved for my friends and people doing roll call. <laughs> Here you go, honey. Huh. Did I miss something? Oh. No, no, I was just letting people know how happy I am about her date. Yeah, we all are. Are you crazy? You can't go out with Dr. Morgan. Barbara Jean likes him. You knew? Well, of course I knew. My wife is many things. Subtle is not one of them. Why did you say he was gay? Oh, uh, I just like the needler. <laughs> oh, great. Now I have dog hair all over my favorite sweater. So you don't have a problem with this? Please. Barbara Jean loves me. She would never do anything. She has crushes all the time. Besides, do I look like a guy who would feel threatened by anyone? <laughs> so if she has a new crush every week, why can't I go out with the guy? It's not about him and Barbara Jean. It's about you and Barbara Jean. Look, if you ask her what quality she admires most in a person, she'll say it's loyalty. And if you ask her what person has that quality most, she'll say it's Reba. She looks up to you, and she would be devastated if she thought you betrayed her. I'm not betraying her. I know. You have every right to do this. I'm just telling you, it will really hurt Barbara Jean. As far as she's concerned, she would never, ever go out with a guy that you liked. <laughs> Now, now, she wouldn't go out with a guy you like now. Ah, got a beautiful house. Thanks. You want to come in? I'm pretty sure my parents are asleep. <laughs> hey. hey, looks like your mom waited up. Sweetheart, what are you doing here? I thought Cheyenne was babysitting. I don't know. She wanted me to cover for her and something about a sale at the mall and would I mind making up a story for mom? So anyway, she's studying. Kira, this is Dr. Morgan. Hey, nice to meet you. Wow. Has dad seen him? I used to be his marriage counselor. <laughs> Someday I'm gonna write a book. Well, that was a great restaurant you picked. Haven't had Chinese in a while. Ah, well, for some reason I had a craving for orange chicken. <laughs> I, I had a terrific time tonight. Yeah, me too. Woo, that 
was just almost one of those kissing moments, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorry. It was too fast. No, no, no. No, I, I should be sorry. I keep thinking about Barbara Jean. <laughs> it's just she likes me so much. Well, I like you, too. Was good. I was kind of hoping that would stink. Yeah, that was mostly just my lower lip. I, I just can't do this. I, I can't do this to Barbara Jean. It would hurt her too much. I mean, people only think she's strong because she's so tall. I understand. Let's just, it's just not fair. I really like you. Yeah, and I like you, too. And the thing is, this shows what a good person you are, which makes me like you even more. <laughs> oh, I wish I was bad. <laughs> yeah, I do, too. I had a great time tonight. Don't leave her! <laughs> Barbara Jean? Reba, you can't break up with him. How long have you been in my kitchen? Well, since we got home from the restaurant. <laughs> I've been following you all night. You realize that's not normal behavior. Hey, cowboy, we're not in your office. <laughs> Reba, I'm so sorry I doubted our friendship. When I was in there eavesdropping on you, I realized how special our relationship is. So take the hunky doctor. You have my blessing. Are you sure? I'm sure. Well, that's very warped and generous of you, Barbara Jean. And you. If you hurt her, you are going to have me to deal with. <laughs> oh, God. Amazing ways how sweet Well, I got my gum back. cookies? Somebody was. I'm putting these back. Hey, Mrs. H, what's for dinner? I got fired from my job today. What happened? Did your boss sexually harass you? Did he call you toots or honey or touch you like this? Because if he did, we are talking big coin. No, I called him a monkey's butt. <laughs> ah, that's okay. Oh, for future reference, the one moment of joy that you feel 
when you tell off your boss, isn't worth it. <laughs> Come on, Mom. Look at the bright side. What bright side? Uh, you're home early. <laughs> Little help? Come on, buck up, camper. <laughs> if anybody knows that there's a brighter side to losing their job, it's me. And hey, I didn't lose some crummy office job. I lost my life's passion. And? When my football career went up in smoke, you told me that just leaves me open for something better. Granted, that hasn't happened yet, but I'm still hopeful. Yes, Mom, and you should be too, because you are talented and fantastic. Yes, oh. and I want you to march right upstairs, get in a hot bath and relax, because you got nowhere to go except up, lady. <laughs> You're right. When one door closes, another door opens. Amen. Thanks, guys. Love you. Aw, honey, I really think you lifted her spirit. Yeah, well, better get used to it. We're gonna be carrying that dead weight for the rest of our lives. <laughs> from your job. Need a hug? I don't know. What's it pay? You know, I was thinking, since money's gonna be kind of tight around here, maybe I could help out. <laughs> See, there's this open mic night at a club downtown, and if my band wins, we get a hundred bucks. Wait a minute. Are you asking me if you can go to a club? I'm asking if I can show my family I care. By playing music in a club? No. Why not? Because clubs are seedy and dangerous. At least the fun ones are. <laughs> but music is important to me. I finally found something I care about. I'm very happy about that, sweetie. I really am. But you can't go by yourself. And I can't go with you. Fine. I'll be at my house, selling my guitar on eBay. Hey. Van. I need you to do me a favor. You got it. Anything at all. I need you to go with Kira tomorrow, because she's going to play in a contest with her band. Oh, come on! <laughs> no way! He goes with you, keeps an eye on you, and brings you back home. Those are my conditions. Fine. But when I'm a huge rock star, one of those security guys is going to babysit you. <laughs> Mrs. H, don't make me do it. They're not even a real band. They're posers. <laughs> they're like... Just like the flag football of music. Hey, you offered to help. Yeah, because I thought you were going to ask me to do the dishes or something. Oh, I need you to do the dishes, too. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, you poor thing. It broke our hearts when we heard you got the boot. Not that we were surprised. You've always been full of the sass. <laughs> Hey, I had a great attitude at that job. Just kept it on the hush-hush. <laughs> well, I baked you this to get you through the hard times. Granny calls it pity pie. Because we give it to people we pity. <laughs> and it's pie. So, have you decided what you're gonna do now? Oh, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. Remember back when I got my realtor's license, but then I got pregnant with Jake? Reba! Good Lord, do you really think this is the right time to have another baby? <laughs> I'm gonna sell real estate. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. I also remember that you had a hard time getting a real estate job because you didn't have any experience selling. Right. But this time, I'm gonna avoid that problem by selling something first. Well, how in the world are you gonna do that? Where are you going to find some poor sap that will let you sell his property without any experience? Well, do y'all still have that condo that Brock was living in during the separation? Oh, no. Oh, yes! <laughs> Say hello to your new realtor! 
Me! Say hello to me! Oh my gosh, this is a brilliant idea! You can be Reba the Realtor! Or, in Espanol, Reba la Realtor. What do you think, Brock? Man, you don't need that place anymore. Barbara Jean's been bugging you about getting rid of it. Come on, give me a shot at selling it. I love this idea. Reba can hold the open house and, and we'll get a discount on the commission. Everybody wins. Well, wait a minute. I didn't say Reba that. Cayete. Oh, Van and Kara are back. You would not believe how much he complained about taking her to that club. Van, are you okay? Oh, how is the band? It was awesome. It was? Kira was amazing. When she first stepped up to the mic, she was a little quiet, and I thought, uh-oh, choke. But then she smiled and lit up the stage. Wait a minute. Kira smiled. And lit up the stage? Yes. And then she was all, hello, Houston, and we were all, hello. <laughs> And then she was like, are you ready to rock and roll? And we were like, yeah. <laughs> and the band started playing and Kira started singing and it was awesome. We would have won, except there was an all-girl band called the Bikinis. Guess what they were wearing? Yeah, but that's not the worst part. They weren't an all-girl band. <laughs> Go. Look around. Cookies are right over there. Make yourself at home. Hey, Reba. How's it going? Great. Couldn't be better. Yeah, I think it could. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I'm here to help. Guess what you don't know about me? That you're actually two crazy people, one on top of the other? Ha! <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Growing up, my daddy owned a used car lot. And every day after school, I would stand out front wearing a bear suit and holding a giant red arrow. I brought in twice as many customers as those creepy blow-up dolls. You know, when... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I get it. Okay. I get it. Okay. I get it. <laughs> Barbara Jean, look, I don't think I... I'm not Barbara Jean. I'm an interested customer going room to room, talking the place up, okay? Watch and learn. <laughs> oh my gosh! I can't believe they taped the surreal life here. <laughs> it's almost like you can still smell Eric Estrada. <laughs> Hey, Reba. How's it going? Ah, yeah, well, you just missed the big blonde balloon lady. <laughs> well, keep up the... Ooh, cookies. Hey, I got some great news. I was gonna tell your wife, but she's nuts. I got an offer. Really? A good one? I think it's a good one. I mean, it's not what you were asking, but it's... No, I'm not interested. You didn't let me finish. Well, is it more than what I'm asking? No, but you're not gonna get then me. Then I'm not interested. Brock! Oh, Reba, come on. I hired you to sell the place, not give it away. Look, anyone can get less money. A good salesperson can actually get more. See, this is why I wanted a professional. What you want is to get off my last nerve. <laughs> You're asking too much, and that was a good offer. So I'm hearing that you are not a good salesperson. So I'm hearing you're a monkey's butt. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Well, maybe you'd been able to hear me if there were ears on a monkey's butt. Okay, why don't you call me that just one more time? Don't you tell me what to do, monkey's butt. All right, that's it. You're fired. Oh, fine. You know the three rules of real estate? Don't work for a monkey's butt. Don't work for a monkey's butt. Don't work for a monkey's butt. <laughs> How's the open 
house going in? Shouldn't you be there? Nope. Your dad fired me. What? What happened? I had him a great offer, but your father was too stupid to accept it. And after I told him so repeatedly, he fired me. You just can't work with some people. <laughs> so you argued with him? Well, honey, sometimes you have to argue with them. Otherwise, they'll go on thinking they're right. I can't believe the luck I've had this week. Well, did you ever think that maybe it wasn't luck? Maybe it's you? <laughs> Lucky for you, Elizabeth is here. <laughs> so Grandma can't use her big people words. Do you remember what you told me when I told you all the teachers at school were picking on me? Good for them? No. You said, before I go blaming other people, I should take a look in the mirror. Cheyenne, have you been waiting three years for this moment? Yes. Doesn't feel too good, does it? Okay, it's nap time for us. Hi, Reba. Oh, Barbara Jean, you're not bringing me another pity pie, are you? No, it's a quiche. In quiche, you're feeling down. <laughs> Barbara Jean, I don't need a quiche, I don't need a pie. I just need to be alone. I understand. Thank you. Oh, Reba. You just need to know that your being fired was not your fault. Maybe it was. Maybe Cheyenne's right. It didn't matter that that was a good offer. I should have kept my mouth shut. But it was a good offer. Exactly. But I couldn't get him to see it. And that's my job as a realtor, to present it in the way that he can accept it. Maybe I wasn't cut out for this. Reba. He wouldn't have accepted that offer no matter what it was. He's never going to sell it. Don't you get it? That's his bachelor pad. Little cave he can scamper off to whenever things get a little rocky at home. Barbara Jean, that can't be it. Really? Well, then why did it take him so long to put it up for sale? And, and, and why did he ask for such an unrealistic sales price? And, and why did he hire a completely unqualified amateur to sell the place? Why didn't I just stop at a bar? <laughs> and let's face it, Reba, he is still not committed to our marriage. Margin, I don't think that's what it is. Well, what else could it be? Well, off the top of my head, he's cheap, greedy, and stupid. <laughs> Yeah, but he was all of those things even when our marriage was good. Yeah, you're right. He was all those things when our marriage was good. <laughs> There's something else, and I'm going to find out what it is. Well, how would you know how to do that? Hey, it's my job to know. I'm a realtor. In case you didn't know. <laughs> Kira enters from stage right. <laughs> no. Kira enters from stage left. No. Kira descends from the sky. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on? You guys have only been practicing for three hours. Actually, we were thinking about hitting a movie. What? No, movies. Guys, don't you realize that there are millions of kids out there trying to take your place on MTV? <laughs> I want you to go out there and play until your fingers bleed. I'll be out in a minute. Goldberg, Goldberg, I want to hear those drums sing, man. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Sorry that it comes down so hard on the boys, but uh, rock means hard work. Until we get on the bus, then it's party time. <laughs> Look, Van, I think I'm going to quit the band. I just don't know if this is what I want. What are you talking about? Kira, I've seen you up on stage. You deserve to be up there. You deserve to descend from the sky. <laughs> now, what's going on? Is it the guys? Are they jealous? Because they can be replaced, you know. Every long-haired slacker failing math wants to be in a band. <laughs> it is the guys, but it's not me they have a problem with. It's you. I'm sorry. They think you're cramping our style. We started playing music because we love it, but you're just turning it into a job. 
They really want me gone? I should have seen this coming, especially when you guys wrote that song, Get Lost Van. Well, anyway, I told them if you go, I go. Kira, this is your dream. And, and you need to hold on to this with every fiber of your being. Tell the guys I'm gone. You sure? Yeah, yeah, I should... I should probably start hanging out with my wife. Van, thanks for believing in me. Thanks for being willing to quit the band. <laughs> yeah, like I was really gonna quit the band. <laughs> comps that show I got a better offer than any condo in this area. Yeah, better. You should have listened to me. Should have listened. Barbara Jean, I'm telling it. She's telling it. I don't care what anyone else got. If I don't like the offer, I don't have to take it. But I like the offer and I want to take it. Yeah, she wants to take it. Reba, I'm telling it. Uh, honey, look, I don't think you understand what's going on oh, here. Oh, I think I do. You don't want to sell your bachelor pad, do you, Slick? <laughs> Why in the world would I need a bachelor pad? I'm married. Well, then why? I don't know if I can explain it. Well, you better explain it. Otherwise, Barbara Jean and I aren't going to give you a moment's peace. Uh, why, Brock? Why, Brock? Why, Brock? Why, Brock? Why, Brock? Why, Brock? All right, all right. Wow. <laughs> We're broke. What? We owe more on the condo than it's worth, all right? When I started golfing professionally, I, I needed some extra income, so I took out a second mortgage on the place. You know, I figured I'd start paying it back when I started winning and stop looking at me like that. It's very easy to judge in hindsight. Well, if this ain't a Shinola sandwich. Oh, honey, you should have told me. It's only money. We can survive this as long as we're not broke. Barbara Jean, we are out of money. Oh, for Pete's sake. She means it's a metaphor of your love. Yeah. Whatever, we're still broke. No. Anyway. <laughs> Until we can come up with enough money to cover the cost of the loan, we can't sell the condo. Okay, I'm sorry, Reba. I never should have put you through all that. No, it's all right. It's mostly my fault. I should have shot you when I caught you cheating on me. <laughs> Hey, guess what, guys? Hmm. I've got great news. Great. We do have the money. What? Uh-huh. When I thought we were getting a divorce, I started hiding some of our assets. You were stealing money from me? No. I was protecting money from you. And you're welcome. <laughs> That's brilliant. Why didn't I do that? Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly how much money did you protect from me? Well, exactly how much do we need? <laughs> Twenty-five thousand? Oh my gosh, what a coincidence! <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does that mean... That you're gonna take the offer? Well, we're gonna have to have a little talk, but yes, I, I think it does. Oh, yes, I did it! I made my first sale! Hey, you guys don't wanna sell your other house, do you? Move far away. Ah. <laughs> oh, Reva, you are such a kidder. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> I find somebody to buy it. Heck, if I had the money, I'd buy it myself. How much do you need? <laughs> oh, my gosh! Does this place have an upstairs?
Come on, give me a flush. 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 God. A straight. Hey, a straight. Hey, Van, Elizabeth and I have a play date with our friend Mindy, and we really want you to come. What? What, Cheyenne? Can you not stand there? You've always been bad luck. I said, Elizabeth and I have a play date with our friend Mindy, and we really want you to come. Sorry, I got a play date with the royal family. You know what, Van, we have a problem. You have been really distant lately. I know, I'm sorry. Fine, play your silly little game. Just help me out to the car. Yeah, but I'm in the middle of a game. I said, help me out to the car. <laughs> Mrs. H, will you sit in for me? Oh, I hadn't played poker in a long time. That's okay. My screen name is Screen Name. <laughs> Keep that to yourself. Okay, okay. I'll call. No, wait, I don't have anything. I want to take it back. How do I take it back? Wait, whoa. Three sevens. Leave it. Leave it. A rush. <laughs> okay, thanks, Mrs. H. I'll take it from here. Okay, Mrs. H. Keep tapping me, you're gonna lose that arm. Why are all the women in this family so me? Jake, we have a perfectly good television over there. Use it. Hey, Reva. I heard you caught the gambling bug. Uh, it's just a game. Give me your credit card. <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? Little chat boxes next to the other players. Do you have to play to get a screen name? Mm -hmm. Because I want to be Wookie Lover. <laughs> Wookie lover. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous screen name I've ever heard. Well, what's yours? <sighs> Ramblin' Red Rose. My screen name is Lady Killer. <laughs> okay, Elizabeth, you and Mindy can get a juice box. Mm -hmm. Who's your boyfriend? Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Little brothers. I'm gonna tell Mom about that magazine under your mattress. <laughs> Actually, that's a good question. Who is this? Oh, um, Michael, this is my mom, Reva, and my stepmom, Barbara Jean. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. You have a lovely daughter and granddaughter. <laughs> and you've got a lovely something else. <laughs> you know what? I think I might have left Elizabeth Blanky at your house. You know, I'll come by later and grab it. Mm, make sure you do. I'm having a garage sale on Saturday. No! <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, gotta go. Okay! Mindy, let's go, baby. <laughs> okay, seriously, who is that? That's Mindy's dad. Where's Mindy's mom? Oh, uh, they're divorced. We talked about it for, like, hours. He even cried a little. Yeah, he said he wasn't sure if he'd ever find love again. I cried a little, too. Well, where were the kids while you two were doing all this crying? They were playing in the treehouse. You guys, he has the most beautiful backyard. Yeah, he made us branch and we picnicked on the lawn. He's so funny, too. He told me the story about this time. <laughs> okay, well, you had to be there. <laughs> Cheyenne, you had a date with this man. It was not a date. We just... We had shrimp scampi and a glass of Chardonnay on the swing in the gazebo. <laughs> Cheyenne, honey, my honeymoon wasn't that good. No, and I have to go back there to get Elizabeth's blankie. 
Well, fix your lipstick before you go. And throw on a little perfume. What? Well, I'm not saying she should date the man, but there's nothing wrong with a woman getting a little attention from others. Keeps the marriage fresh. <laughs> kind of the way you freshen my marriage with Brock? <laughs> Cheyenne, you have to talk to Michael and tell him the truth. Tell him you're a married woman and you don't feel comfortable being alone with a single man. He'll understand. Yeah, that's probably best. Remember, be firm. Oh, I've been doing squats. Yes, 3-H winner! <laughs> Mr. H, that's like four hands in a row. How'd you get so good at playing poker? Oh, when Barbara Jean and I were separated, I had a lot of time to think. And that bothered me, so I started playing poker online. Yeah, nothing huge, just, you know, fun stuff to pass the time, keep me out of my head. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't like it in my head either. <laughs> well, of course you don't. You're a guy. We're simple. We are thinking one of three things. I want a sandwich. I want a woman. I want a woman who can make me a sandwich. <laughs> Why don't women know we're simple? I mean, Cheyenne always wants me to listen. That's fine if I got a magazine or something. <laughs> but it's just, I don't know, we've been kind of strained lately. And I'm just feeling... Well, I don't really like talking about the way I feel because it, it makes me feel... Uh, well, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. That's how men are. You know, we don't like a lot of the yik-yak and the blah, blah, blah. Oh, don't forget the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the only way for a man to be happy is to get really good at pretending to listen. Yeah, but Cheyenne always knows when I'm pretending. Well, then you have to practice what I call half listening. That's when you listen for a key word that you can repeat back as proof that you were paying attention. You know, you are really good at this relationship stuff. You can tell you've been married twice. And when a woman starts talking, you just nod your head and say, mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll throw in, cool. Cool. Yeah, but listen, that's only for the really skilled half-listener, because inevitably she's going to say something like, my cat got run over by a car today, and you'll say, cool. What happens then? You buy her flowers. <laughs> Mr. H, this is awesome. You know what? I'm going to buy Cheyenne some flowers. Daisies, those are her favorite. Hey, listen, have them write something really chick-like on the card, okay? Lay it on as thick as you can. The more ridiculous it sounds to you, the more she's going to like it. Mr. H, you're saving me here. You are an awesome father-in-law. Yeah, I know. You know, it's great to have someone to teach this stuff to. Okay. Whoa, dang. This red rose is really good. Hey, red rose, take it easy. You're scooping up my money like an ex-wife. A man who gives me his money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, check it out. He's a hoot, and his screen name is Golden God. Oh. <laughs> if you look half as good as you play poker, you should be a model. <laughs> He's probably married to some pathetic sad sack. <laughs> hey. Oh. oh, did you tell him? Yeah. He got really quiet. You know, guys don't really take it that well when they know they're not going to see me anymore. What exactly did you say to him? Well, I didn't want to hurt his feelings, so I told him that I really liked him, that I wasn't sure Elizabeth was enjoying her playdates. That makes it sound like you like him, but you don't want the kids around. Oh, no, 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 Mom. I was very clear about the way I said it. My body language was, it's over. I mean, seriously, I had my arms folded. <laughs> Diane, that's not clear. Folding your arms could mean I'm cold, hold me. It could also mean, what up, dog? Hello. Got a delivery for Cheyenne Montgomery. That's me. Thanks. Who would send me flowers? Oh, gee, I don't know. 
Maybe somebody has a huge crush on you, like Michael. Oh, no, it couldn't be him. You folded your arms. <laughs> Maybe it's not him. It could be Van. You are the air I breathe and the beats of my heart. I live to listen to your words. <laughs> Sounds like Van. <laughs> oh, that's not Van. This is Michael. Oh, that is just so forward. Makes me so mad, I just want to put on some lipstick and go over there. <laughs> flowers? Yeah. He sends me flowers? You guys have fancy CCs. He is going to break. How did this Michael guy know that you like daisies? I might have told him the daisies were my favorite flowers. Oh. <laughs> you told him your favorite flower? Uh, Cheyenne, that is like emotional third base. <laughs> Well, it's obvious that this guy's not gonna just go away. No, what did I do? I didn't mean to lead him on. Why did God curse me with subtle beauty and a bubbly personality? <laughs> okay, are you ready to listen to me now? You need to call Michael and tell him straight up that you are a married woman and he cannot contact you anymore. Or better yet, send him flowers with a nasty note. <laughs> what? I once had a gentleman caller who kept sending me flowers against my will. So I sent him flowers back with a nasty note, and it worked. I never saw him again. I mean, sometimes I sensed my photograph was being taken. <laughs> but I never saw him again. Barbara Jean, that's not going to work. Oh, yes, it will. This Michael guy clearly speaks the language of the flora. Now, if we only knew what his favorite flower was. Oh, it's a tie between birds of paradise and azaleas. <laughs> Is there anything you two didn't talk about? Just right. Stay out of my life or I will call the police. <laughs> Enjoy these birds of paradise. <laughs> Cheyenne, talk to Michael. And this time, don't use body language. It was your body that got you into this mess. <laughs> I'm going to take these flowers and throw them in the trash before Van sees them. Do it my way, Cheyenne. I am not wrong. I think she's wrong. So wrong. Send flowers. Okay. <sighs> Someone just took my picture. Seven languages, and I'm a crack shot with the crossbow. How about you? Some say I remind them of an American looking Antonio Banderas. Especially when I dance the flamenco. My hair is the color of the morning sun. Hence the name, Golden God. <laughs> Mr. H. Mr. H. Mr. H. What? We have a problem. I found the daisies I sent Cheyenne in the trash. In the trash? If you told me she was that mad at you, we could have gone with roses from the get-go. <laughs> Mr. H. Maybe I should just start paying attention to my wife. You don't want to go there, son. <laughs> Look, just order the flowers and we'll go from there. All right, got it. Oh, and uh, leave those flowers here. Why? I don't know, something about Barbara Jean feeling neglected and blah, 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 and anyway, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Michael? Hey, Michael. <laughs> Those aren't roses. No, they're birds of paradise. <laughs> yeah, flowers are flowers. Just give me the pigeons of paradise. <laughs> I would really like to give these flowers to Cheyenne myself. Hey, Michael. Buddy, listen, I really appreciate the enthusiasm for the job, but I'm going to tip you a buck 
Either way, so why don't you just give me the flowers and I'll make sure Cheyenne gets them. No, but they're not for Cheyenne, they're from Cheyenne. Cheyenne got me flowers? <laughs> not exactly. Well, who else would she get them for? I'm her husband. Here you go. <laughs> he forgot his dollar. Man, I don't think those flowers are for you. Well, I think someone's a little jealous. I'll just put these here so lonely people can enjoy them, too. Now, let's just see what she has to say. Man, don't read the card. It's bad luck to read the note. I had a nice time with you, and I'm very sorry, but I could never see you again. Three years of marriage and a child together, and that's a nice time? There's been a mistake. Yeah, I think there has been a mistake. And here's Cheyenne to explain it. Explain what? Uh, remember those flowers that you sent earlier? Well, they were, um, returned. And Van thinks that the note is for him. And since I'm the only one who's not getting flowers today, I'm gonna go have some wine. Well, I'm waiting. Okay, Van, those flowers, they weren't for you. They were for another man. What? No, no. <laughs> See, Mindy's daddy, Michael, and I had what I thought was a totally innocent play date, only later I realized that he thought it was a little less play and a little more date. <laughs> I'll kill him. No, no, Van, no, stop, Van. It didn't mean anything. Oh, yeah? It didn't mean anything, huh? Well, this lovely arrangement of pigeons of paradise <laughs> means something. You know, for a dollar extra, you could have had a balloon. <laughs> you know what, Van? Maybe it did mean something, okay? Maybe I was a little more lonely than I thought, and, and it was nice to have someone who actually listens to me. Oh. Oh? <laughs> See, I, I pour my heart out to you, and you say, oh? I need you to talk to me, Van. Oh. Van! I'm sorry. I'm just not good at it. Can you try, please? Cheyenne, it's been a hard couple of months. And since I've been out of football, I just... I, I've, been, I've been feeling kind of empty to me about this. Okay. Cheyenne. I feel... <laughs> empty. Baby. Mm. Mm. What else? What else? Well, I want a sandwich. Hungry. I'll get that. <laughs> Flowers for Shan Montgomery. How you doing? You stay away from my wife, pal. Well, you'd be sorry. Yeah, you better run. Van, it says you sent these. Hey, Golden God. I'm going to call it a night. You want to play again tomorrow? No can do, Red Rose. Why not? Got a flamenco lesson? <laughs> no, you've taken all my money. But I had a lot of fun. Likewise. Mm -hmm. Since we won't be doing this anymore, should we tell each other our real names? <laughs> Why not? I live in Houston, and my name is Brock. I 
I also live in Houston, and my name is Kevin. It's two sticks of butter in it. I call it stroke in a bowl. <laughs> no chili for me. Finn and I are dieting. Cheyenne, the last time you were on a diet, you were sucking the cookie dough right out of the tube. I'm serious. We are committed to this. Why are you on a diet anyway? You look fantastic. Oh, I know. <laughs> but Van is all worried that he's going to get fat now that he's not playing football, so he's dieting and I'm being forced to join. Well, they say those are the keys to a good marriage, vanity and hunger. Oh my gosh, it's almost one o'clock. Barbara Jean will be here any minute to get her dog. Would you go call it in from the backyard? Oh, sure. Brock! 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 You know, I still think it's weird that Barbara Jean named her dog after Dad. Yeah, it's so mean to the dog. <laughs> Jean didn't want her dog to go outside. She didn't. That's why I have to get it back to room temperature. <laughs> I don't see her out here. Yoo-hoo! I'm back! Oh, where is my precious little baby girl? <laughs> go find that dang dog, and when you find her, hold her over the chili pot to warm her up. Oh. <laughs> Come on, little Brock. Time for kissing. Mm. Well, at least buy her a glass of wine first. <laughs> Reba, thanks so much for watching Brock. Was she any trouble? Oh, hardly knew she was here. Oh. <laughs> Still don't. Where is she? Well, I really don't know right now. Last time I saw her, she was upstairs watching television. Uh, Reba, on the Brock watching instructions I left with you, it explicitly states no TV. Relax, it was PBS. It was a dog show. And she was fascinated to see that some dogs don't have to wear turtlenecks. <laughs> well, I certainly hope you didn't play fast and loose with the rest of this stuff. Did she do her doggy Pilates? <laughs> yes. Yes, she did. Oh. Uh, uh, Mom, yeah. um, you know that thing that you wanted me to heat up? Well, I, um, I can't find it. <laughs> Are you sure you looked everywhere? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes that thingy likes to dig in my azaleas. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, nothing. We're just looking for Jake. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Little booger won't stay out of the flowers. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. uh, where's my dog? We really don't know for sure. <laughs> it was outside. What? <laughs> that is number one on the list in bold type. <laughs> Are you sure you have looked everywhere? Well, I think so. I mean, I kept calling her name. What if it's really gone? Look, we are going to find the dog. Everyone just needs to calm down. <laughs> She's gone. My Brock is gone. Somebody has taken my Brock. You know, when I had to say that a while back, I was a lot calmer. <laughs> are planted in the past Though my life is changing fast Who I am is who I want to be A single mom who works too hard Who loves her kids and never stops 
Right down. Somebody found the dog. No, they have a six and a half in the black pump. <laughs> I'm gonna be at the mall. You're not going anywhere until we find that dang dog. Hey, I picked up Mr. H and I put up all these flyers. Hope to heaven that dog can read. <laughs> Brock, what happened to your ear? What? Oh, this? I, uh, I cut myself shaving. <laughs> you shave your ear? Hey, your body goes through lots of changes after you turn 40. Yeah, I'm shaving in a lot of places I never thought I'd have to. You know, Mr. H, you should try waxing. Huh? You don't have to do it as often. Yeah, I did it once for fun. Yeah? Now I am hooked. Kara, where have you been? Uh, Barbara Jean wanted me to get a tape of the dog to give to the police. Why didn't you just give them a picture? Because it doesn't capture her spirit. She only had the dog a week. How many tapes can she have? These are just from yesterday. Check this out. Ha, I feel sorry for the poor sap who had to videotape all that. Uh, eighty bucks is eighty bucks. I just don't understand it. How did the dog get out? Are you sure one of you guys didn't leave the gate open? No way. Maybe it found a hole underneath the fence. Or a hawk swooped down and took her away. <laughs> oh, man, that would be awesome to see. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, terrible for Barbara Jean. But awesome to see. <laughs> you know, I feel bad for Barbara Jean and all, but to be honest, <laughs> I kind of hated that little dog. Barbara Jean, be you okay? Yeah, where were you? Well, while you guys are all running around with your heads cut off, I did something productive. I went to see a psychic. <laughs> well, did she know what happened to the dog? Oh, she knew. <laughs> so tell us, what'd she say? Well, one person in this room already knows what she said. Wait a minute, who's a psychic, her or us? <laughs> She told me that someone in my family, somebody that I trust, killed my dog. No fair, there's no one to the left of me. Nobody in this family would hurt your dog, no matter what Madam Whackjob said. Her name is Jackie the All Seen. Well, with a last name like that, you practically have to become a psychic. You know what I think? I think you did it, Reba. I think you're the one Jackie the All Seen saw. I didn't do anything. I love that dog. Oh, you're right. What? Mom, you always complained about four-legged yeah. Brock. When she brought her over here, you hid and pretended oh. like you weren't home. Why, Reba? Were you jealous of my relationship with that dog? <laughs> Is that why you didn't take good care of her? If anybody didn't take good care of her, it was you, dressing her up like a canine Elton John. Oh. <laughs> she was a dog, Barbara Jean. She wanted to go outside. Outside, Reba? Oh, good Lord, she's not an animal. <laughs> All right. Here's what happened. <laughs> oh. 
I know over at your house they have different rules, but over here at my house, little doggies go on the floor. There you go. hardly have any legs. How'd you do that? Okay, come on. There you go. <laughs> Alrighty then, come on. Come on, dog. Be a dog. Yeah, I read the list. What are you gonna do? Tell on me? She did tell on you through Jackie the All Seen. Barbara Jean, I'm not the first person to put a dog out in the yard. Oh, good Lord, Reba. There are killer hawks everywhere. That's what I said. That'd be awesome to see. Just did not want her up there on my counter, and she wouldn't have been if you didn't treat her like she could walk on water. Walk on water? Yeah. Reba, what is dog spelled backwards? <laughs> Look, it doesn't matter how Barbara Jean treated the dog, you shouldn't have put her out in the backyard. Yeah, Mom, you went against Barbara Jean's instructions. Her printed, laminated, color-coded instructions. <laughs> I tried to tell her. God! It spells God. <laughs> Clearly, you didn't like the dog or else you wouldn't have put it out in the yard. Well, I guess since you're the expert on not liking dogs, Brock, you're the one who said you hated the dog. <gasps> Brock hater. <laughs> no, Barbara Jean, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. Uh -huh. And you're always telling me how much you hate the dog. Oh, yeah? Since when do you listen to what I say? Look, sure. I didn't like sharing my toothbrush with the dog, but... <laughs> that doesn't mean I did anything to it. I mean, how could I? I wasn't even in the yard. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I saw you. <gasps> See? It's not me. Brock's at fault. It's a natural law. The sun sets in the west and Brock's at fault. You hated the dog. You lied about being in the yard and come to think of it, you had something in your hand. Something that, that looked like a sack. A dog napping sack. It wasn't a dog napping sack. It was a pillowcase. Oh, Reba, I'm so scared. Hold me. No. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, fine. I was in the yard. But I wasn't there to hurt the dog. I was there to make friends with it. By stuffing her in a pillowcase? <laughs> this is why we don't have friends. <laughs> the vet said that I should get her used to my scent. So I, I sprayed some of my cologne on a pillowcase and I brought it over here for her to smell. It was going fine. At first. Good girl. Hey, listen. I'm not such a bad guy. I'm a good guy. Yeah, smell that. That's obsession. For men. It's a pleasant, manly scent. Come here. Come here, you see? You see, I'm not a bad guy. Give me some sugar. Oh. <laughs> My ear! You monster! So you didn't cut yourself shaving? Of course not. I'm not old enough to shave in my ears. Well, it wouldn't kill you to go up the nostrils a little bit. It made you angry, didn't it? Angry enough. To kill? Look, I'll admit I wasn't happy. But when I left the yard, the dog was fine. Doesn't look good, Mr. H. You know what they do to dog killers in jail? Especially pretty ones like you. 
or pretty ones like you. Well, when I say it, it's not creepy. You just admitted you were in the yard, too. Who? You! What? His heart beat faster, but his brain continued to run at the same speed. Van? I, I, I wasn't in the yard, I was in the garage. No, you weren't. <laughs> How do you know? Because I was in the garage, waiting for you to come work out with me, but you never showed up. Maybe he didn't need a workout. Maybe he'd already broken a sweat by digging a teeny tiny little grave. I didn't go near that dog. You know, come to think of it, you never did go near that dog. Whenever we came over, you left the room. Well, that may have more to do with you. <laughs> Admit it. You hated my little precious. I didn't hate the dog. <sighs> I was scared of it. <laughs> what? I was in the yard, whistling, happy. And then I heard it. Man, I can't believe you were afraid of that little bitty doll. You didn't see the rage in her eyes. Then you're not afraid of dogs. Mary is a German Shepherd, and you love that dog. Cheyenne. I'm not afraid of big dogs. I'm afraid of little ones. When I was a little kid, my parents let me watch Cujo on TV, but it was on a nine-inch screen. Dogs are so small. If they had just bought me a normal-sized television, I would not be living with this curse. No! Not funny. Okay. So if it's not me, it's not Brock, it's not Van, and again I say, not me, then who can it be? All I know is when I was enjoying my time in the treehouse, I saw the dog run into the garage. Didn't Cheyenne just say she was in the garage? She did. Mm -hmm. Cheyenne just said she was in the garage. I'm going to ask you one time, Cheyenne. Did you do something to my dog? No. I'm going to ask you two times, no. Cheyenne. Three times, that's no! Oh, right. Cheyenne! Just tell us why you were in the garage. I told you I was in there to work out with Van as a part of our new healthy lifestyle. Untrue! After I scampered down the treehouse and ran up to the bedroom and locked the door, I saw your workout clothes on the bed. <laughs> and just last week I saw you chasing the dog. Because she took my cookies. She always took my cookies. Your cookies? <laughs> but wait a minute, that would mean that... Oh, my dog. Okay. I wasn't in the garage to work out. I was there to do a very bad thing. Where are my cookies? You. I warned you before, you little mud. Get your paws off. My cookies. That's it, you filthy girl. Oh, my. What was my my my? You ate the cookies <laughs> off the garage floor. <laughs> oh, Cheyenne. Did the diet make you hungry? Hungry enough to eat a small dog? <laughs> Shut up, Kira. Look, Van, I hate this stupid diet. It's not my fault that you think you're gonna get fat because you're not playing football. Hey, I am sensitive about this issue. <laughs> Look, 
The dog was fine when I left the garage. I, I finished the cookies, did 600 sit-ups, and came inside. Well, then there's only one person left. Kira! All right. I admit it. It was me. And what happened was this. Eternal life will be mine. Very funny, Kira. Although if you had done it, I wouldn't have had to cook dinner. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like it was any of us, Barbara Jean. Well, you can all make excuses till kingdom come. All I know is that somebody did something to my dog. Jake? Honey, are you okay? I think you guys better come outside. Why? What is it, bud? It's the dog. Oh, my gosh. What happened? It's kind of gross. Oh, God! Barb Jean, calm down. Jake, come on. Tell us what happened to the dog. I think he killed a hawk. <laughs> Rock's alive! Awesome.